I don't think you can afford to miss the boat on the tokenization of real world assets. It is becoming such a big narrative for the future. Does one of the best investment opportunities lie within this brand new narrative that wasn't around during 2021? And if so, which cryptocurrencies should you be focused on? These are some of the questions that are currently rolling around in my head. And today I hope to answer at least part of that question because today I want to take a look at a cryptocurrency called Centrifuge. And Centrifuge is a cryptocurrency that fits neatly inside the category of real world asset tokenization. And it is a project that I've been watching since May of 2023. If you had invested in this one when I mentioned it last year, inside the 8020 crypto newsletter at the recent peak it would have returned 300% not bad get yourself on the mailing list but what I want to know is does it have way more upside for the future I've got no doubt that there will be winners in this race but I want to know if centrifuge can continue to win this race or if it's another bad protocol just simply wrapped up in some fancy packaging so to truly understand the potential that centrifuge holds as always I've been through the latest white paper its website the community forums socials uncovered its history and its tokenomics to save you hopefully hours of your own time in your decision on whether to place your investment capital into this project all that I ask for in return is that you hit the like button down below and you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content Let's see if Centrifuge is one that should be added to your altcoin shortlist. The aim of Centrifuge is quite simple. It wants to become the go-to platform for on-chain finance. But that's quite a broad sweeping statement right there. It's actually more specific than that. The vision here is slightly different from other DeFi protocols. Where other DeFi protocols are focused mainly on lending, borrowing, and overall manipulation of crypto tokens, that's the important key here, that already exist on-chain, Centrifuge targets real-world assets and the act of bringing those on-chain and then leveraging them in the realm of DeFi. And specifically, it wants to revolutionize traditional credit markets. So this involves any process whereby one party provides funds to another party and that second party doesn't have to pay back those funds immediately. That is the market that Centrifuge is seeking to change. And the protocol sees three main issues with the current credit market system. Number one, the current model is heavily fragmented and plagued by multiple levels of fees from parties that arguably don't add a lot of value. Number two, it is usually illiquid, which means that it's more expensive to borrow funds. And number three, there is no clarity on how things work. And by that centrifuge means that there's no clear visibility on how assets are truly performing and how they connect. Usually, if a business wants to gain extra working capital, it would need to approach a large financial institution or a wealthy investor. However, these opportunities are often limited, especially for smaller businesses. And in addition, as I've already said, there is often a plethora of fees that come on top with every step in the process of securing financing. On their socials, Centrifuge actually provides a great example of why the protocol is needed. It states that in a recent $1 billion Ford Prime auto securitization, both the paying agents involved and the auditors involved in that process accumulated over $6 million in fees, 6 million across 25,000 loans, which is then that kind of payment is often then bumped on to the borrowers that are using that financing scheme. And then Centrifuge argued that not only can the same credit be accessed instantly through their protocol and also trustlessly, but the intermediary fees from parties like the paying agent and the auditor here could be completely removed. So with the help of the blockchain and smart contracts, the process can be far more efficient and far lower in cost. So that's the mission of Centrifuge, but how do they actually get these real world assets to come on chain and could the process actually work with real world assets that exist today? Starting right at the blockchain fundamentals, although originally starting its days on the Ethereum blockchain, Centrifuge is now a protocol that comes with its own blockchain, the Centrifuge chain. And this is a blockchain that has been built and developed inside the Polkadot ecosystem and is now one of Polkadot's parachains. This means that the application can interact with Polkadot's ecosystem seamlessly. And then because it's following Ethereum standards, it also means that the protocol can tap into the Ethereum ecosystem too. So that gives us the basis of the underlying fundamental architecture of the system. But what's the process of bringing these real world assets on chain? That's the key mechanism here. Well, based on my research, the process as I understood it is this. You have two main parties that could use Centrifuge. You have those that wish to build working capital, so typically small businesses, but it could be anyone. In the Centrifuge ecosystem, these are known as asset originators. 
To access new capital, asset originators can borrow against their real-world assets that they might have, such as things like invoices or mortgages. And then to tokenize these real-world assets, Centrifuge mints NFTs that are then used to digitally represent those assets. The asset originator can then drop those assets into a liquidity pool in return for stablecoin reserves, which the business or person can then use elsewhere. And then on the flip side of this, who is the one that is providing these stablecoin reserves? And these are in investors on the other side that are lending these reserves. So this is anyone that is wishing to offer capital in return for the yield for lending those funds. The tricky thing here is merging the worlds of traditional finance with on-chain NFTs and the blockchain. The two don't go together. But Centrifuge has put a legal structure in place that makes sure that this does work in the traditional sense. So any organization that wants to bring assets on-chain, they need to provide the legal structure for all of those assets, all of the checks and balances, things like that. And that is all summarized for investors then on the other side. So investors can look at executive summaries. They're always available if an investor wants to find out any details about the real world assets that are underlining that liquidity pool. Now, here we are inside the Centrifuge app and we've got a list of liquidity pools that investors can place reserves into. But the final question that we come to on this is what happens if the underlying assets of these liquidity pools are defaulted on? And one of the things that Centrifuge implements to overcome this are two separate tranches of investors. On the one hand, there is a junior investor tranche that are happy to take on more risk in return for bigger returns. And then on the other hand, there's the senior investor tranche that are happy to take on lower, more stable returns for less risk. And then I believe in the event of any of these assets defaulting on Centrifuge, the senior investors are covered by what the junior investors have on the line. So as I understood it, there are basically different levels of investors with loads of different risk appetites and therefore can choose which products they wish to place stablecoin reserves behind. So that brings me to the end of all of the things that I wanted to describe in terms of how Centrifuge works. But now I want to turn our attention to the when and the who. So when was Centrifuge founded? What is its history and who is behind it? So Centrifuge was founded in 2017 by a German-led team that was headed up by Lucas Vogelsang, someone who has experience in e-commerce and fintech startups. So it looks like Centrifuge was his first venture into blockchain, if I'm not mistaken. The first version of the app was known as Tin Lake, and that was launched in 2020. And this is often uh, still referred to in a lot of the literature and videos that you see on Centrifuge. So this was the first version of the app that allowed institutions and others to finance real world assets on chain. Then the team decided to build their own Centrifuge chain inside the Polkadot ecosystem, which is now why the protocol exists on one of Polkadot's parachains. And they also decided to change the name of the application from Tin Lake to just Centrifuge, I guess to keep everything under one name umbrella. In terms of partnerships, Centrifuge has partnered with other DeFi applications such as MakerDAO, Aave, where real world assets are able to interact with other aspects of the DeFi ecosystem, which is pretty good. And it means that both MakerDAO and Aave have obviously vetted the Centrifuge team and made sure that their applications could work with their own. And when we jump back across to the Centrifuge app, the partnerships appear to be working their magic because the total value locked in the ecosystem is currently at all time highs, sitting at $264 million. So by now we know what Centrifuge is, how it works and what its history is, but do the tokenomics of this token stack up? CFG is the associated coin of the Centrifuge application. And at the time of shooting this video, it currently stands at 50 cents, pretty much bang on 50 cents. The market cap of the token sits at just over 230 million, which means it falls within the small cap category of altcoins. And out of the 525 million CFG tokens that are in total supply, 471 million are in circulation, which is approximately 90%, so quite a high percentage of circulating supply. Interestingly, if we then switch to the market cap or switch between market cap and price, we can see that while price has seen a little bit of an uptick over the last quarter, we've seen a peak and then we've seen it drop off, market cap on the other hand is actually peaking at all time highs or it peaks at all time highs back in December around the $350 million mark. Now, on the other side of the equation, we have demand. What could be set to drive demand for the CFG token in the future and what could cause the price of the CFG token to increase? And in the case of Centrifuge, there are three main use cases for the CFG token. And these are the payment of transaction fees on the Centrifuge blockchain, 
the governance of the protocol, and then any specific function to finance real-world assets on-chain. At the moment, there's no indication of them bringing in something like staking because the founder actually doesn't think and doesn't back staking as a narrative for DeFi protocols, which I kind of agree with him. There's a lot of protocols out there that offer staking and really the process is redundant. It doesn't really do the projects any favors because all you're doing is just inflating the market with more tokens. But the main thing is here that as the centrifuge protocol is used more, it should drive more and more demand for the CFG token. So the two should go up in parallel. So those are the tokenomics. I think Centrifuge is currently still a very fascinating project that appears to be positioning itself as a leader within the real world asset niche. However, before making a final decision on whether Centrifuge should make it onto an altcoin shortlist, there are some key risks that I want to talk you through. The first risk on my mind is competition and that the narrative of real world assets is, while not exactly new, it is a new narrative as a whole that's being discussed in the crypto markets way more than it used to be. But because of that, we've seen so many of these real world asset focused projects pop up over the last couple of years. So Centrifuge has plenty of competitors to deal with. Relio Network, Ondo Finance are just a few that pop into my head right now, but there are so many more out there that I've seen. And because the narrative of real world assets has become so popular, there are now tens of protocols in the market trying to capture that market share. So we need to consider if Centrifuge is likely to outperform others that already exist in the space. Second on my list of risks here is smart contract risk. And this has to be a risk for all DeFi focused platforms. And I say this because we've seen so many Web3 applications hacked or attacked in the past that we have to anticipate the worst case scenario here that Centrifuge could be at risk. Even with so many audits, we can see the auditors on the screen here and checks and the fact that they've got MakerDAO and Aave on board, there's just no way to be 100% certain that smart contracts won't be affected in some way. And then finally, we come to the third risk, which in my opinion is the complexity of this project. As the underlying collateral in the product involves the credit markets, the protocol and therefore the CFG token have to be at risk if there are ever any issues with the credit markets. Now, this is slightly beyond my understanding as to say what this might be, which in itself is a risk. So to truly understand this protocol, you need to gain a strong understanding of the risks involved with the credit markets and the risks of the liquidity pools that exist on Centrifuge. So with those risks in our mind, we come to the final question of looping back round where we need to balance everything up and consider if Centrifuge should make it onto an altcoin shortlist. And as I always say, this decision will be unique to each and every one of you, depending on your risk tolerances and personal situations. In no way, shape or form is any of this financial advice. But for me personally, I really like Centrifuge and it will be making it onto my altcoin shortlist. Despite my lack of understanding of how the credit markets work and how they operate, I'm going to be swatting up in the future I can still see the potential that a protocol like Centrifuge holds. The idea of bringing real world assets on chain, real estate, invoices, mortgages, all that kind of thing is one of the biggest ideas in the blockchain space right now. And if, it's a massive if, if Centrifuge can even just get a small piece of that pie, the CFG token could benefit significantly. And while it's definitely not the smallest protocol, the market cap of the token is still under 500 million, which means that there could be a good room for upside. Interestingly, we have no idea how big the real world assets niche or narrative could be in the future. So we have no real point of reference for how high the market cap of real world asset tokens could climb to or how low they could go. We need to remember that they could still fail. The total value locked in the protocol is now at all time high levels and has continued to climb throughout its existence. And the future dilution of the token is now extremely low. There should be little risk of dumpage in the future, which I like. And then finally, the process of onboarding real world assets through NFTs makes sense to me. And I like the fact that the protocol is trying to merge the benefits of blockchain and smart contracts with the regulated industry of TradFi. It seems like that will be the only way to truly onboard real world assets successfully. And it's certainly impressed MakerDAO and Aave enough who are now both building partnerships with this protocol. But my big caveat here is that it would definitely be classified as a high risk investment. All of crypto's high risk, this would be even higher risk. Anything that has smart contract risk scares me. There are less guarantees than you get with an infrastructure play. However, as the tokenization of real world assets is only just getting warmed up, the unknown upside potential of a play like this might be worth taking the risk. 
If you want to know exactly where I think the price of Centrifuge might go in the future, I will be recording a price prediction video for this project. So once it is up and ready, I will leave a link to it somewhere on the screen. And if you've enjoyed this video and you want more detailed insights each and every week, consistently every weekend, including crypto spotlight news, portfolio boost tips, and also promising picks, the altcoins to avoid and also chase, then get yourself on my mailing list for 8020 crypto. I'll leave a link to the newsletter down below. Finally, as always, don't put more money into a cryptocurrency project than you can afford to lose. This is such a high risk game. It should be considered alongside a variety of other assets. It's not a get rich quick scheme. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.